This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Budgeting. And on the next page, section six, um, you'll see key terms. Uh, as it says, this should be revision, so quickly. Uh, fixed budget. <coughs> I do apologise. Um, the fixed budget, that's the original Uh, the original budget that we've paid, if you think back to the variances, you know, we've got our original budget based on what we expect to produce, we expect to sell. Uh, we call that the fixed budget. And the importance of it, I mean, uh, one problem, of course, is, is it can get very out of date, which is why. Uh, many companies periodically review, uh, revise the original budget. Uh, but what is quite important about the original budget is the overall budgeted profit will remain our target. What I'm getting at, we may have budgeted on paying wages of um, $5 an hour, and we end up with a budget profit of half a million. Maybe, uh, part way through the year, uh, we find we have to increase wages to $6 an hour uh, because all our competitors uh, have increased wages. There's high inflation and so on. But of course, wages go up. We're not going to make the half million anymore. But we don't just lie back and say, oh, isn't that wonderful? We're not going to make the half million. That was our original target. And surely, even if wages have gone up, we'll do everything we can to try and find ways of saving money elsewhere to still achieve at least the total budget profit. You know, whether that uh, means um, trying to work with fewer employees or um, trying to save costs elsewhere, I don't care. But, you know, the minute you realise that you're not going to hit the target, Again, you'll search for ways of saving money elsewhere uh, and trying to achieve it. Uh, the flexed budget, well, I'm certainly not going to write down here because we've got an exercise anyway, uh, but we did that when we were doing variances. It's where you rewrite the budget in order uh, for the actual levels of activity uh, in order to do our variances. It's, we compare what we spent with what we should have spent for our actual level of production. We flex it. A rolling budget is quite neat and be careful, people are often confuse it. I've already said a lot of companies might do a budget for a year, but because it does get out of date, they might, oh, perhaps every three months, if you like, rewrite the budget, correct it, because things have changed. Well, a rolling budget is something uh, a little bit different. Uh, what would happen is, normally we do budgets for a year, but that's not a rule. But perhaps in December, you'll do a budget for January through to December of the next year. But at the end, uh, sorry, during January, you'll then redo the budget, but still for 12 months. So you do a budget from February to January of the following year. So it's still a 12 month budget. And in February, you'll budget again. Uh, but in February, you'll be budgeting for the next 12 months. You'll be budgeting for March through to the following February, and so on. So every month, you're preparing a budget for the next 12 months. Now, that sounds a lot of work. In fact, it's not quite as bad as it sounds, because you know, you've already got your budget from January to December. Uh, when you're doing February to January the following year, well, you're taking 11 months you've already got. You've got February to December. And maybe you need to revise, update them, and then you're adding on a month. 
So, you, you know, you're not starting from um, the beginning all over again. Every month, you're revising 11 months you've already got and then adding one more month. Um, and, and maybe I'm saying too much, but rolling budgets are actually a very neat idea for two reasons. One is the budget's always going to be more up to date. You know, costs do change, obviously, however well you've tried to budget. Um, so every month you've got a new, more up to date budget. But also, what's quite neat about it is it becomes part of normal work. You see, too many companies only do the budgets once a year. You know, maybe revise it after three months or something. They maybe do it once a year. And they're tending to do it, you know, they've got their ordinary jobs to do anyway. So they're tending to do it, squeeze it in and having to work late, you know, rushing because there's a deadline. And however hard they try, they're going to end up making mistakes. And they don't do it again for a year. A year later they come and they're sort of having to think all over again. How do I, what am I going to do? Well, with a rolling budget, it becomes part of your normal job. You know that for one or two days every month, you're going to have to do it. Um, and so it starts becoming part of normal work instead of all this overtime trying to get it finished. And you get better at it because you're doing it every month. You know, you remember what to do. Um, it's not as though you're thinking, oh, what did I do last year? You know, so anyway. And the last two I'll do in reverse order, so don't misunderstand me. Um, control, feedback control, first of all. Uh, what this is, is the normal way we use variances. You know, I said several times when we went through basic variances, you'd normally do it, it's not a rule, but normally you do it once a month. And if you find in January that you've overspent on labour, you'll look to see what went wrong. Because if something's gone wrong, you can't obviously correct January, it's too late. But if something's gone wrong, you can correct it for the future. And so hopefully, having found the problem in January, sort it out and we'll stop overspending for February. Now that's feedback control, and rather than write a great long definition, just to summarise what I just said, um, adverse variance in January. Correct the problem for the future. Probably still I'm getting up, but I've got that feedback. Uh, because the results from January, which has already happened, is giving you the information, the feedback, which can help you for the future. On the other hand, feed forward control. Feed forward control is when you identify in advance there's a problem. And you can perhaps change your plans. Um, let me give you an example. Um, we've done our budgets. We hear, or we find out, that the price of materials is going to increase a lot. Now, there might be absolutely nothing we can do, we've got to live with it. But if we know the price is going to increase a lot, uh, then we'd look to see, can we save money? We'd look to see if other other suppliers we could use instead. Or um, uh, could we use some cheaper material? Can we find some cheaper material and use that instead? So feed forward is when you identify a future problem. And change your plans. Now, in fact, you may have recognised what I was saying. One of the best examples of those feedback is operational variances. 
At the end of each month, you see how well the manager did last month. Feed forward is planning variances. Worldwide prices have increased. Uh, and I said, as soon as you realise, um, you'll look for ways of saving money elsewhere and changing your plans. All right, exercise three. Well, I'm sorry, I really don't need to do an exercise three. I really don't. Uh, because it's just like something we did in chapter seven. I mean, have a look with me. It says a company prepared the following fixed budget for the year. Uh, we budget on selling and producing 10,000 units and having those costs and having that selling price. At the end of the year, the following costs have been incurred for an actual production of 12,000 units. So at the top of the budget figures, at the bottom of the actual figures, and it says prepare a flexed budget and calculate the variances in total. Well, as I say, for me to do all of this really should be unnecessary. Um, it's something you should be able to do yourself. You've got an answer to that you can check to. And, um, but it, if you haven't watched the lecture on chapter seven, then do. I will do two lines of this, but the rest of it, I'm sorry, um, I'm not. Uh, I'll start it off. First of all, what was our actual, what was our original, sorry, our original budget and the fixed budget? Uh, the sales revenue. Uh, 10,000 units at a budget of $10 a unit, so sales revenue of 100,000. And what about the costs? Well, materials, 50,000. Labour, 25,000 and so on. If you're using it for variance purposes, we don't, it'd be silly to compare actual with the original fixed budget. We need to flex it to the actual level of activity. So the flexed budget, the original one was for selling and producing 10,000 units. We simply rewrite it assuming everything goes perfectly, but for actual production sales, which turn out to be 12,000 units. So if all the standard costs and selling prices remain the same, the sales revenue at $10 a unit, you'd now be expecting 120,000. Uh, materials, well, it was 50,000 for 10,000 units, which is $5 a unit. So for 12,000 units, you'd expect to spend 60,000. I said write two lines, I'm writing three. Similar sort of way of labour. We were budgeting originally 25,000 for 10,000 units, which is 250 a unit. The actual activity for production of 12,000 units at 250, uh, be higher, Ooh, is it 30,000? 12,000 times 250, yes, is 30,000. Well, you can finish off the flex, but you see it also wanted to know the variances. Well, they're the difference. It says revenues up 20,000, so 20,000 favourable. Oh no. Stupid of me. It's late in the day. Sorry, we compare actual with the flexed. So the actual revenue was 122,000. The actual costs, materials 60, labour 28,500. Now I can do the variances. Sorry, we can all make stupid mistakes. Uh, compare actual with the flexed, is that sensible? So sales have increased by 2,000, favourable. 
uh, materials are spot on. No variance, spent exactly what we should have spent for our production. Labour, we've actually saved money. Uh, so it's favourable. Um, and again, you see, although this should be pure common sense, what we did on variances, although we spent more than we originally budgeted, 28 and a half, that's against 25, it would be silly to penalise the relevant manager. We produce more, we expect to spend more, uh, and the manager in charge of the labour has actually done well, we spent less. So a very easy exercise. Um, we really should have done this before we did variances, but still, you know, the variances we analysed. All right, um, we're not quite there. We've one more lecture where I'll go through the remaining sections.